my name is Hina Kewal Ramani and I am an assistant professor in Biani Group of Colleges. This is the genetics class and our topic today is gene interactions. As you must be well versed with the Mendel's laws, there are three Mendel's laws given by Gregor Johann Mendel, the father of genetics. There are the three laws: laws of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment. We all know that law of dominance states that. one allele is dominant over the other allele so when we talking about the genes one allele is dominant over the other allele the other allele is said to be recessive and the one allele is known as dominant allele in the second law law of segregation it states that whenever in a diploid organism there will be both the alleles present they might be homozygous dominant heterozygous or homozygous recessive either of the three cases whenever there is a gamete formation whenever there is meiosis one allele will be received in one gamete and the other will be received in other gamete this is the law of segregation where the alleles segregate in different alleles that the alleles segregate in different gametes This is the law of segregation, which is also known as law of purity of gametes. The other law is the law of independent assortment. This is the most important law, which fails to explain linkage and gene interactions. Law of independent assortment actually states that the pair of alleles or the genes do not interfere with each other's inheritance. That means one gene will not affect the other gene. in its inheritance or pattern of expression but in these two cases this statement does not hold true so what happens is in linkage two genes which might not be related which which might be coding for two different genes but in linkage these two genes if they are present on the same chromosome they will be they will not be independently assorted they might be linked and will be expressed in one gamete which means that these genes are not assorted another case is of the gene interactions so when one character is governed by more than one gene that gene particularly that trait particularly those genes interact and produce that trait that means if one character is governed by more than two pairs of genes so what happens is those genes interact with each other and affect the pattern of expression this phenomenon is known as gene expression and this phenomenon is known as gene interaction okay so one example of gene interaction that we'll be studying today is epistasis epistasis is the phenomenon of masking one gene by another that means the one gene will inhibit or suppress the expression of the other gene it is not like the alleles it is not an allele these are two different genes with two different alleles they have two different pair of alleles so one gene is dominant over the other gene and will not let the other gene express in this case the gene which is masking the character is known as epistatic gene and the other which is being suppressed is known as the hypostatic gene one classic example of epistasis that we'll be considering here is white leghorn and white wine rose these are varieties of white fowls the white varieties of white fowls are white because of a reason they have the color gene c and they have an inhibiting gene i here the inhibiting gene i is the epistatic gene which inhibits the expression of color gene c and here in the case of white wine rose what happens is the color gene c as you can see here is recessive and the inhibitory gene is also recessive so what happens is since the color gene is recessive so what happens it is also white this is also white because of the inhibitory gene express do not let the color gene express so what happens is when these two varieties are mated together and we get an f1 progeny we get a heterozygote these heterozygotes are white with black markings when they are mated among themselves we get such a punnett square now what happens is we will get here a ccii a ccii here we will get a ccii cc 
I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I C C I I and C C I I. You can work it out like the norm of unit squares that we use in the dihybrid ratios. Now, mostly the dihybrid ratio that we have seen is nine is to three is to three is to one, which is according to the Mendel's laws. But see, according to the Mendel's laws, these genes do not interact with each other. Here, these genes will interact with each other, and wherever you are not finding a cap capital I. Wherever there is a capital I, it will mask the expression of color, and this, as a phenotype, will express as white. Wherever there is a capital I, that means there is an inhibiting gene. This inhibiting gene will not let the color gene express. So wherever there is a small I, that means the inhibitor gene is recessive. Only those characters, only those places, only those genotypes will be expressed as white. So when I'm talking about this. You get a white here, and you get a white here, and you get a white here. So we get a ratio of thirteen white is to three color. That means wherever the inhibitory gene is recessive, only there the color gene will express. Rest everywhere these genotypes will express as white. Okay, another example of epistaxis is the fruit colors of cucurbita pepo, already also known as summer squash. Now, what happens is there are three, particularly there are three colors in fruit colors of cucurbita pepo. These are white, green, and yellow. See, what happens is. The white is governed by the dominant gene, which is W. So, like the inhibiting gene in the foul example, this white gene will be masking this green or yellow gene. Now, this capital G is for yellow, codes for yellow, and the small g denotes green. So, what happens is this phenotype, this genotype, will be green due to the small g and as this white gene is recessive here, this won't be masking this green gene, so it will express only in the case where it is recessive. Now, what happens is since it is dominant and it will inhibit the expression of the G gene, so what happens is it will not express, and hence it is white. So, if we cross the white and green fruits, and whatever we get in the F1. If we self that, we're going to get a Punnett square, which you're going to figure out just now. And that's G G W W. That's G G W W. G G W W. G G W W. G G W W G G W W and again G G W W G G W W G G W W G G W W G G W W G G W W and G G W W and the recessive one G G. Now what happens is, as we know, there is only one green year, that is the recessive one. So this year will be green. 
and wherever there is a capital W that is the Y gene it will mask the expression of the D gene. So what happens is we find this where there is no capital W this gene will express as yellow and this one is going to be yellow and this one is going to be yellow and this one is going to be green. So here we are getting a ratio of 12 is to 3 is to 1. 12 we will be getting white, 3 we will be getting yellow and 1 we will be getting green. This modified ratio we are getting due to the epistasis of the W which is the white gene which is epistatic over the hypostatic gene G. Another example of gene interactions is duplicate genes. So what happens in duplicate genes is the two genes express the same character. So when two genes which are located at different loci are affecting the same characters, so if, even if one of them expresses, they are present both in the same individual, but if one of them expresses, then this trait is expressed. They are not cumulative in their effects. If both the genes are present, uh, they both will not express, only one will express, but both does the same function that both express the same phenotypic trait as the other. One such example here is, uh, one classic example is of the shepherd's sperm. What happened is, uh, G. H. Shull does a study on shepherd's sperm, popularly known as capsella. This capsella has two kinds of seed capsules. One is a triangular seed capsule and the other one is a spindle shaped capsule. Now what he observed is that the triangular one was strikingly higher than the spindle one. That means the amount of triangular capsules was strikingly higher in this than the spindle ones we get a modified ratio of 15 is to 1. That means only one recessive and rest will be dominant. So these genes, this, is, this occurs due to, because the both genes are identical. That means this C and D both perform the same function that is code for a triangular capsule. This CCDD codes for a triangular capsule and here this one, which is a double recessive, codes for a spindle capsule. So what happens is, in the F1, we will get all the triangular capsules, since we have a C and a D. This occurs when we self-fertilize them, we get a punisoid that we are going to work out just right now. So we get a CCDD, we get a CCDD, we get a CCDD and we get a CCDD. Here we get a CC and DD, here we get a CC and DD, here we get CC and DD, here we get again CC and DD. Capital C, small c, capital D, capital D and a DD and we get a CC and a DD, CC here again and capital and small and CC D small d, CC and DD and CC and DD and CC and DD. Okay. So what happens is here we are going to get all 15 of them since they express a C and D. Even if they don't express C, D and they have a C. So since C and D both are coding for triangular capsules, they will be expressing the same trait. Even if this is recessive, again this is dominant. So any of the dominant would do, that means if any of the uh, gene is dominant, if either C is dominant or D is dominant, then we will get a triangular capsule here. Only the case where 
these both of them are recessive we're not going to get a triangular one that is this one is going to be the spindle one rest all of them are going to be triangular so here we are getting a modified ratio of 15 is to 1 that is 15 are triangular and the other one is spindle so these duplicate gene see you can already look at the ratio which is strikingly high in case of nominal both the genes are coding for the same trait both the genes are coding for the same state but they are not accumulating that is both of them will give the same kind of either of the dominant is going to lead to the same dominant expression. Such genes are known as duplicate genes which are expressing the same characters and yet are not accumulating. Thank you.